Hello everyone, welcome back. At some point I called this MSI profile version of the GTX 1050 Ti a Christmas miracle, and I'll provide an explanation for that in the conclusions. For now however, we'll try to drive home another nickname this GP acquired, Legendary. There are quite a few traits of this video card that allowed it to deserve that name, and while all of these are available in the GPU-Z window, I will highlight the mix of floating point performance, 4GB of VRAM and the 75W TDP. This means two things. First one is that this card, well, especially this low profile card, is very suited to turning an average office PC into a decent entry level gaming machine. The second one is that the cooling solution can be quite small, and as seen here, small enough to still get a low profile card. In our case, we have two small fans trapped on an aluminum heatsink that has, fortunately, fairly thin fins. The 4GB of RAM also make contact to the same heatsink, so the only things left to their own devices are the power delivery MOSFETs. With the default fan curve, the GPU reaches 64C in heaven for a delta over ambient of 40C, and just 65C in warframe for a delta over ambient of 41. This is about the same thermal performance as the low-profile GT1030 we reviewed in the past, which makes sense. Twice the TDP, twice the fans, same temperatures. The test system used here is the same Z230 HP workstation, sporting the E3 1241 V3 Xeon CPU, better known as i7-4770 in the consumer space. As for RAM, the PC uses 32GB of DDR3 running in 12 channel 1600 MHz. GPUs at this level of performance will be occasionally CPU bottlenecked when running games at low settings, and this will be noted when it happens. We start the gaming results section with Alien Isolation, an older game that serves mostly as a common test for all review GPUs. At 1080 resolution and ultra settings, the card averages 138 FPS and the 1% loss number stays in the low 90s. As mentioned in a previous video, there is room to increase the resolution and still have a good single player experience. The test run in Apex Legends took place in the training map, at the lowest settings possible. The performance of the tiny GTX 1050 Ti did not let down matching bigger cards at averages ranging between 108 and 140 FPS, at resolutions between 1080 and 720 respectively. I would not drop the resolution too much though. The 1% loss for all tested resolutions stays at about 70-75% to of the average FPS, and a lot of fights take place at long range. You will need a large pixel count on your screen. After reviewing three other cards of the same class of performance, Resident Evil 4 did not bring any surprises when running on the 1050 Ti. At 1080 resolution and low settings, the average FPS reached 40, and the 1% loss was about 25. Now, I would play the game at these settings, we're talking about a fairly slow paced single player title, but dropping the resolution to 720 will increase the FPS, both for the average, now in the low 60s, and the 1% loss, now in the mid 30s. Battlefield 5, or at least the multiplayer part of it, requires both high resolution and high FPS. At low settings, the GTX 1050 Ti averages between 57 FPS at Full HD and 82 FPS at 720 resolution. The 1% low stayed around 75% of the average mark, so the frame delivery was good. This means that 1600 by 900 is probably the better compromise for multiplayer, while campaign players, yes, there is such a thing, can stay at 1080. Control, however, is a single player only game, and at the lowest settings, the same conclusion applies here as well. At 1080 resolution, the 1050 Ti averages in the mid 50s, with a 1% loss in the mid 30s. This is fine for this type of game, but if you feel that you lost a boss fight because of the GPU's performance, then dropping the resolution to 720 will double that average FPS and more than double the 1% loss. At low settings, Rainbow Six Siege remains playable in terms of online multiplayer, at all tested resolutions and render scales. The average FPS provided by the tiny MSI card ranges from 123 at 1080 resolution and full render scale to 203 at 720 resolution and 50% render scale. Now, if you pay attention to the 720 resolution results alone, you can tell that a 3D scale drop of 50% brings up the average FPS by just 10%. To paraphrase Lars Gustafsson, and that is how you spot a CPU bottleneck. I feared that at 1080 resolution and low settings, the game engine used in GTA 5 will start to run into problems. Thankfully I was wrong, and the GTX 1050 Ti averaged 124 FPS in the benchmark run. 
The 1% lows of 65 are fine in absolute value, but they will be noticed by owners of high refresh rate monitors for being at about 50% of the average. Still, we're not talking about Apex Legends or the finals here, so you should be just fine. CS2 however is more alike to the aforementioned online titles, so the higher the frame rate the better. And it feels that the GTX 1050 Ti could deliver, had it not been for the CPU. The reason you now see a graph instead of the usual lines of text is because this is a textbook system bottleneck. Same average of around 130 FPS and about the same 1% lows of mid 60s to low 70s across all three tested resolutions. Dota 2, the game that I can't play to save my life, was tested at 1080 resolution and low settings, except the render scale, which was set to 100%. The match replay averaged 81 FPS and had a 1% loss of 53 FPS. The GPU has no problem rendering the game, and I have no problem grabbing some popcorn while watching the replay. While I am mediocre at playing Fortnite, the actual reason I started using match replays is testing consistency and not having to worry of being wiped out when switching to the next test resolution, then waiting to join another match. The card averaged 139 FPS at 10 nit resolution, in performance mode and with the draws distance set too far. The 1% lows were an unusually good 81 FPS. Dropping the resolution will increase these numbers to 167 FPS and 92 respectively at 720 resolution. The card runs the game in full HD without any problems, and it will be up to your own fortune, or others' misfortune, to win the match. I kept an eye on the board's power draw in Overwatch 2, and the game pushed the GPU to its maximum, but all of those 70 watts of power are put to good use by the GTX 1050 Ti, as it manages averages starting at 207 FPS at 1080 and low settings, and reaching 389 at half the pixel count. That's a fancy way of saving 720 resolution. Anyway, the 1% low stayed in the 70% ratio of the average at all times, so no complaints here about the tiny card. There is really no point in dropping the resolution from 1018 in Rocket League. At low settings, the GTX 1050 Ti can provide 3 extra frames for my monitor to discard for each frame it actually ends up displaying on average, but the input latency at 240 plus FPS is still maintained. The 1% loss of 122 represents just 50% of the average, and owners of high refresh rate monitors might be able to pick that up, but hey, to me it looks fine. As I was looking at the benchmark file generated by MSI Afterburner, I noticed that Splitgate behaves weird with the Pascal card as well. At lower settings, the average FPS range from 169 at 1080 resolution and 231 at 720. Ignore the less than double FPS for half the pixel count, and have a look at the 1% lows. 54 for 1080 and 65 for 720. Did you have a similar experience in Splitgate? Next up is the Hyre Studio Trio, Paladins, Round Royale and Rogue Company. All three of them were ran at 1080 resolution and provided the following results. A W in Paladins, by the skin of our teeth, at 155 FPS on average, and a nice FPS for the 1% lows at high settings. Identical performance as the GTX 960 in Realm Royale, 145 FPS on average and 50 FPS for the 1% lows, also at higher settings. And a more demanding match in Rogue Company, my favorite of the bunch, at 99 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 59. I already mentioned my 60Hz display, so did you manage to guess the average frame rate for this title? World of Tanks Blitz ran at 60 FPS on average and 55 FPS for the 1% lows. I played the match at 1080 resolution, and despite the low settings, the sight of my tank exploding from a KV-1 shell was nothing less than spectacular. The GTX 1050 Ti will run the Mariana mission in Warframe at a stupidly high 271 FPS at 1080 resolution and low settings. The Afterburner benchmark file had 166 FPS for the 1% lows, so the game experience is good. A couple of GPU generations ago, video cards needed either two 6-pin connectors or a 6-pin and an 8-pin to provide this level of performance. The fact that the 1050 Ti can do that with the power of from the PCE slot alone is quite amazing, and this is, in my opinion, the reason why the 1050 Ti gets the legendary attribute. If you can get one at 60 USD or less, then you can use it to turn that hassle powered office PC into a surprisingly decent entry-level gaming machine. As for the Christmas miracle, 
Well, I got my sample as defective for about 15 USD and it turned out to have quite a few problems. It needed a bit of work and when I saw the board no longer cutting out in heaven a couple of days before Christmas, it felt like a miracle. If you're curious how this tiny video card handles a more demanding title, then the video suggested on your screen should do it. As for this one, well we're done. I hope you liked it and I'll see you.